The goddess Frigga is very fenny. What is a fen, you may ask? A fen is a type of wetland. You've probably heard of a bog. Ireland has been called bog land or bog country before. And one of my favorite Irish Gaelic phrases, toga boge, means take it easy. The, the bog part of that phrase actually is a bog because it means soft. So take it easy, toga boge. There were sacrifices in bogs of swords and perhaps even people and that the Celts, this is something they did. This is a liminal space that they considered sacred. And so a fen is similar to a bog in that it also produces peat. And peat was extremely important to our heathen ancestors because it allowed them to create armor and swords. A fen is a little more moisture rich than a bog so that it can sustain a wider diversity of creatures. So this video, we're gonna be talking about the ethnoflora specifically pertaining to the fen. A fen nightingale is a term for a croaking frog. So that's a nice image. <laughs> Where else do we see that term? Probably fenrir, the wolf of the fens. This is a creature that has fen right in its name, fenris wolf, fenrir wolf. A lot of the creatures in the fens take on a feminine detail about them, such as the, the fen duck is called the maiden duck. So who is this maiden? Why is it called feminine thing? We see this all over the fen or the domain of Frigga. Some people think that Frigga is the same as Saga, which is a goddess whom Odin visits daily to drink in Sokvabek. This is another watery domain, Sokvabek, sunken bench, sounds like a fen, it could be another aspect of Frigga, some scholars think. I'm not sure that these trees necessarily grow around the bog, but one of them is ash, one is elm, and the final witch tree that showed up in my like 200-year-old dictionary of Webster is a spindle tree. I found this very intriguing because spindles are obviously sacred to Frigga. I mean, everything about the goddesses later became associated with witches. In fact, many people were burned at the stake or killed for doing what Frigga essentially was doing in the folklore, changing the weather. She's the weaver of the clouds. Orion's belt is called Frigga's distaff. Frigga's peak in Antarctica it was named after her due to the fact that this peak seemed to have the most cloud formations. When it comes to the spindle, uh, another Teutonic kind of slang thing that I'm trying to bring back from our Germanic ancestors is the idea of your spear kin and your spindle kin. Now kin clearly means family, uh, your loved ones, and so you have your spindle side of the family is what the Teutonic folks would call your mother's side of the family. Your spindle cousin would be your cousin through your mother's side, etc. And your spear kin is, on the other hand, your father's side of the family. So it shows the dynamic, the family roles, right in the folk name, Spindlekin Spearkin. There's also the toponym of a Frigga Fjord in Greenland, as well as lakes named after Frigga. The cranberry is called the Fenberry, the Witch's Hopple, or the Witch Hobble. Why is the Fenberry also called a Witch Hobble or a Witch Hopple? I presume it's because it's hard to walk on a bog and you're hobbling about. So witches might have a hard time and literally be tripping. They call it witch withy because all these vines are tripping over. A withy is something that you can weave baskets with. Witch's hobble is also called a tangle bush or tangle legs, tangle foot. And I found it funny that another definition for this kenning is strong whiskey. So if you have strong ale, it may tangle your feet. There's a folktale reference. I'm not sure where it originates, if anyone knows about it, but the idea that Frigga, when she went across the Nine Realms asking everything to mourn for the loss of her beloved son Balder, she wept tears and they formed mistletoe berries. Mistletoe also forms witches' brooms in trees and they can get pretty hefty, but Again, that's another thing that came to be called witchy. Mistletoe is actually named from the Anglo-Saxon missile meaning dung and toe coming from twig. So it's dung on a stick. It's not the loveliest name for these beautiful white berries, right? I mean, they noticed that where the birds were 
uh, dropping, they, that's where the plant grows. So another bird that I would associate with Frigga is the fen thrush, also known as the missile thrush. This bird is the devourer of the mistletoe. That's literally what the, the name means. So the missile thrush or the fen thrush is also called the stormcock. Unlike other birds that when a storm is coming, they run and hide or find shelter, the stormcock or the mistletoe bird will actually go to the high branches of the tree and start singing before a storm. The stormcock also is fiercely defensive of berry bushes and trees, so it will guard the mistletoe that it's choosing to thrive off of. When the church started to take over, syncretize, and appropriate all of our pagan folkways, they also took our plant names, ethnoflora that was sacred to Frigga, and twisted it into something else. For example, cowslip is called Lady's Keys because the goddesses of the Norse held the keys to the household. They actually were pictured with the keys around a belt. And cowslip is the key flower. So this was twisted into a folk tale that St. Peter, when he was taking the key to heaven, he dropped the key to the pearly white gates and an eagle caught this key and flew it up to him and saved the day. So the cowslip formed over the area where the eagle flew or something. And we can see that the eagle here might represent a former goddess to which this key is sacred. I'm interested in the origins before they were changed to Christian terms, like Lady's seal became Solomon's seal, stuff like that. But at the same token, our religion and folk names are constantly changing. I can create one at any time. Cause I'm a heathen, I can do that. People forget that part that it, it's not less authentic for you to do it yourself. Lady Slipper is a species of orchid and it is called Lady Slipper or Venus's Slippers, Venus's Shoes. In a lot of old dictionaries, you'll see Frigga or Freya listed as the Venus of the North because they were using the counterparts that they knew of in Roman and Greek classical mythology and they didn't really know per se what to call other than compare it to Venus. So a lot of these plants, I find it suspect that when you see Venus's shoes, maybe they meant Frigga's shoes originally. Frigga has many attendant women and one of these goddesses, Fulla, where we get the term full moon, the goddess of abundance, she actually has the task of maintaining Frigga's shoes. So I'm gonna start the tradition now of calling the Venus shoe Frigga shoe instead. Lady Slipper Orchid is now going to be known as Frigga Slipper Orchid because we know she has nice shoes and these plants actually look like shoes and grow around her domain so I found it relevant. The German word for spider is Spinne and within the last 200 years someone has named a genus of jumping spiders after the goddess Frigga. So folk names are constantly evolving and new ones are being created every century. Another great example of how Frigga is growingly associated with the bogs and the fens, even after all this time, is that somebody named an entire species of butterfly after Frigga as well. The Frigga butterfly dwells around the bogs. Frigga's grass in Scandinavia is used as ladies' bed straw, so it's for childbirth, and since Frigga is associated with motherhood, and she's the all-mother, they call this Frigga's grass. According to Wikipedia, it also has Celtic connotations and was called Huhullin's skin or something. So it was used when the Irish hero Huhullin had a warp spasm, a reestrand it's called. He would get real beastie, painting the town red, and when it came down to it and he needed to calm down, this was the plant that he took. So it's named for a Celtic deity, Huhullin, and it's also named Frigga's grass. That's from Wikipedia, but all these other plants ha I have found in a dictionary at least 200 years old. So those are actually folk names such as the witch's hopple, uh, the mistletoe being called a witch's broom. All that stuff goes back farther than I know. I hope that betters your understanding of Fen Cellar or Frigga's Hall. Wetlands are very important and they are vastly dwindling. So this video is a part one. It's going to be continued with a lot more research, a lot more to talk about. I hope you all enjoyed my video. Hail Frigga and have a good night. <laughs>